So good afternoon to everyone and welcome to this Still Ahead webinar. This is the first uh, webinar of this year and uh, Still Ahead is the um, brand that we use in Pitini Group to, to build a new portal. There's a new connection point from our commercial team to all uh, Pitini customers. So a direct line where you contact and fix an appointment with all the commercial stuff. Into this uh, portal, which is stillhead.it, you can find webinars uh, as this one. So you can inscribe and live events in future, and you can inscribe to the newsletter. And so an interesting content point with all uh, our commercial team. Um, I will remind you before start this webinar that uh, you can see is a chat. Uh, where you can write down your question about the, the topic of today. So feel free to write down something uh, if you need it. I will put all the questions at the end of the webinar the, uh, at the two hour speakers today, which I will introduce to you. This is uh, Enrico Levan from our export department. And then we have John Lindball, our man in North. This is the CEO of North Ferro. This is the partner company that we have uh, in uh, in Scandinavia. The topic of today's webinar is um, the innovative Storstrom bridge. And uh, I will start um, with uh, with Enrico and welcome him and asking him a um, quick overview about the Pitini Group activity. So please, Enrico. Thank you, Flavio, and good afternoon. Welcome to all participants. Uh, my name is Enrico Leban, and I work for the Pitini Export Department since 2007. And I mean, I'm uh, today the sales area manager for North of Europe. Um, starting to talk about us, um, you must know that Pitini Group is a, is a family owned group that from the very beginning had uh, a very strong international vocation. Reliability, continuous research and technological innovation together with the respect on the environment and people are the guidelines of our business and definitely our mission. Going uh, into the key figures, telling some numbers about our company and production. We have uh, total capacity and production of 3 million tons per year. 1.5 billion euro is the yearly turnover. We sell with a quite regular uh, basis uh, in 60 countries all over the world. We can count on uh, uh, 18 production facilities and also on 1,800 people. Going a little bit more into the structure and into the company organization, uh, our, our group can count on, the, on three steel mills, and these are the red points that you see on the slide, five mesh production sites, two plants for drone steel and welding products, and also four logistic offices. Looking at this map of the world, uh, you can see marked with blue color all the countries where Pitini products are sold. And uh, of course, Europe is where our sales and our work uh, is concentrated. But going into the detail, we can see also that the, the rest of the world is served by our materials. In detail, uh, we have a domestic market of 38% and a 62% that goes all on export. Talking about our products, uh, we can say that um, we have five main divisions and uh, these divisions are divided in wire rod, the building sector, drone steel, welding materials and road solutions. Talking about the steel for the, the, the building sector, 
that is uh, the, the, the sector we want to speak about deeper today, we must say that uh, Pitin range of products is one of the most complete that you can find on the market with a wide range that includes rebars, rebars in coils and electro welded meshes with all the different steel grades and standards. Going deeper into, into the type of products, um, the so-called jumbo steel uh, rebars in coils uh, is, is, a, is a coil that is uh, produced and supplied in a very compact, compact packaging in a range of diameter from 8 up to 25 millimeter and two different sizes of the coils that are 2.5 and 5 tons. We have a production of rebars that goes uh, from a range uh, of 8 millimeter up to 40 millimeter and mesh production in standard and customized types. Thank you very much, Enrico. Now I leave the word to, to John, asking uh, um, a little bit more about uh, the partnership that uh, you, uh, John and Enrico, built together in Northern Europe. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Also greetings here from uh, the north, where spring is coming. So the snow is away and the sun is shining and it's nice. So as uh, Already Flavio told earlier, we are the exclusive distributor of uh, Pitini Group in Scandinavia and the Baltic States. So you would could say that we are the prolonged arm in the market of the Pitini Group. And during the years we have worked very closely together, especially promoting the product of rebarring coils, which has become a little bit of a success story. Going a little bit further to those participants that are not from the north, I will tell you briefly what Scandinavia is. So Scandinavia actually is a huge land area. So it is as big as Central Europe, but we have very, very few people here. So all five countries together, I'm talking about Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark and Finland, we're only about 30 million people. And you would think that this is one uniform area, but this is not really the fact. So we have quite a lot of cultural differences also here between the countries. So of course, if you look at the map and you see Iceland up in the northwest corner, that's where the real Vikings live. So uh, that's where everything is going from. Then going west or eastward, we have, of course, Norway, which is about 5.5 million people. And everybody knows Norway. It's one of the richest countries in the world. Well, they have, of course, oil a lot. Then we have Denmark, which actually is a very, very innovative country. They have a lot of investments, of course, in environmental technology. That's why we're speaking about them today and also in pharmaceuticals, and they're also a very, very trade forward nation. So you could call them actually the big businessmen of Scandinavia. Then, of course, we have Sweden, which is the biggest country in Scandinavia. They have about 10 million people and uh, it's the former superpower and still the superpower in Scandinavia. They have a very, very diverse uh, industrial base, starting from ABBA music to IKEA to forest industry to steel to cars. So Sweden is really a very, very diverse country with a very, very diverse industrial base. And then you have, of course, far to the east, close to the Russian border, you have my home country. I'm a Finn, so Finland. And Finland actually has a total different kind of language from all the other Scandinavian countries. And Finland, you would call actually a country that is called mini Germany. We have a heavy, heavy focus on forest industry and steel. So if looking at the figures, we have uh, two of the biggest forest companies on a global level are located in Finland. So a little bit going back to the partnership with Pitini and Nordfero. So we have had the pleasure really to promote the top-notch product of rebarring coils into Scandinavia. And you could actually say that our coils nowadays are regarded as best in class on the Scandinavian market. Of course, Nordfero being the prolonged arm in, uh, of Pitini Group up in Scandinavia gives us also a competitive edge. The truth is that, let's say, Scandinavian people, we talk best with each other. We have the same cultural base. We have the same language also. And then really what we have put a lot of focus on is to develop the logistical network. So this is really what we are focused on, especially to get some, an eco-friendly way of delivering steel just on time up to Scandinavia, which shortly takes. 
So thank you. Thank you very, very much, John, about this uh, presentation uh, and ask you a little bit more about the project, the topic of today's presentation. So can you give me a brief description of the Storstrom Bridge? Well, actually, everything started already in 2017 when uh, our biggest and most old customer, Lemvik Müller, invited us to join for this project concerning the Storstrom Bridge. And Levik Müller is one of the key players, especially in reinforcement in Denmark. They're the biggest on the market and they have a huge focus, of course, on promoting rebarring coils. And they have been using our coils for years and have a very, very good uh, experience for our material. And that's why we were invited for this project together with them. So a little bit about the bridge itself. So the new bridge is a substitute for an older bridge that was built already in the 30s. And you have to remember that this new bridge is actually just one smaller part of a bigger project, which is actually the mega project that is going on in Denmark, that is building of the tunnel between Denmark and Germany, which will be ready at, in 2029. So a little bit about the project itself. Uh, a joint venture was created in 2018 with uh, the building nominated to two Italian companies. It will be what you call a dual purpose bridge with both road and rail connections and everything is going according to plan. So it should be open for traffic by the end of year 2023. OK, great. Uh, but uh, I asked to Enrico which was the, the, the product of the Petini group that play an important role on this bridge construction. So can you tell ask more which product of the, our range they choose for this uh, important and innovative uh, bridge. Thank you, Enrico. Yes, Flavio, uh, we are talking about our jumbo coils and uh, actually when we are talking about this product, we like to, to remember and to remind that Pitini has been the very first plant in the world to introduce this innovative manufacturing system already in 2002 uh, and that time it has been installed a spooler in the site of Osopo. The, the range of, of, of this product that goes from uh, diameter 8 uh, up, to, up to 25 millimeter, I would repeat what I said earlier, with two different uh, packaging of uh, 2.5 and five ton coils, uh, we can say that, yes, it's only steel, it's a, it's a coil, <laughs> but uh, there are actually some, some points, three points that make this, uh, this product very special. And the first one is definitely, it's compact packaging. Compact packaging uh, is, is very important for the transport, for the storage of the material. Uh, the second, special uh, detail of this, this product is the total lack of the wire twisting and uh, this is thanks to the to the spooling technology that we have and very important for the end users and also uh, the lack of waste in in the in the further process okay great so um Ludwig Muller uh, has a need of uh, the coils, of rebarring coils, and uh, among the different players in the market, they choose and contact uh, Pitini. And uh, can you tell um, us which were the key points that the strength points of Pitini products uh, respect the, 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 the competitors? Yes, sure. Uh, quality, quality is definitely uh, one one extremely important part and i would say that this is not even an optional uh, it is something that is mandatory and uh, what gave us the opportunity is the fact that we have successfully obtained the globser certificate for all range of our products talking about uh, the epd well this is this is the second main point um, when we talk about, uh, about this field, uh, we must say that Denmark is for sure the, the forerunner in all the environmental issues 
And this EPD that has started from Denmark has become really a kind of benchmark. Uh, what this EPD consists about, it is practically a document that makes a clear picture of the environmental impact of the products and the production itself, the, com the meal, the company. Okay. Um, this EPD gives a lot of attention, for example, to the CO2 emissions and in general to the environmental impact. And we can, we can really say that, that uh, these, these numbers for, for Pitini production are really in good shape. And thanks also to this, uh, Pitini Group has been one of the first steel mills uh, from Southern Europe to obtain and to have this declaration from 2019. About our sustainability, this is also, also uh, a very important part, a very important word for our company. Uh, touching, touching and touching some, some additional points, we must say that EPD is only the top of the iceberg in, uh, in our sustainability program. Uh, the Pitini Group has, since long time already, a very strong focus on a constant uh, sus and sustainable development. That means, in easy words, that we want to be less and less. Uh, we, we want to have less and less environmental impact. So, uh, like, like I was telling, we do a lot of things uh, for the environment and uh, in order to make uh, the best example, uh, we want to speak a little bit about the zero waste project. That is a project that has been started already in the 90s. So we can say a long time ago, and it is a great plan of investments on the circular economy of the group. And the reason is that one of our main issues is that we take care of all the waste. Uh, to connect to this, I would, I would say that one of the great properties that steel has is that it can be recycled forever. But of course, when we produce steel, it, we also generate some waste. And what we have practically done with a lot of studies, technology, we have find a way to transform all our waste into a new product. About some of our goals, I can make some more examples and tell some, some, uh, some results. One of the most important is for sure uh, related to the emissions reductions. So since 2017, our emissions have been reduced by 58%. The one second example is the heat recovery. We save about 300,000 cubic meter of natural gas every year and not, not less important, the optimization of the water resources. Since already 2011, we have saved about 800,000 metric cubic, uh, cubic meter, I'm sorry, <laughs> of water each year. Great, thank you, thank you, Enrico. This environment is a great topic on this on this project. Uh, but I want to ask to to John, going back to him, uh, which kind of uh, challenges uh, do you face uh, supplying the material to this uh, to this customer? Thank you, Flavio. Okay, what Enrico touched here very thoroughly also, of course, is the environment. And you have to remember, you know, that we're very high up here in the north, so this was, of course one of the main challenges to get it environmentally and very effectively up here. So we have decided to deliver it all by rail. Then another actual very important thing was that the coal needed to be rust free because at the processing of the of building of the bridge, uh, we had to have the coals blue, what you would say, because we had to have smooth processing. And of course, when 
the cut and bending is done at site, we cannot deliver from a steel mill well, like directly to the unit. We had to do it somehow just in time. So how we did this actually is that we arranged a local hub in uh, Denmark, about 100 kilometers from the production site. And there we stored the coils and then on call of principles from Lemmick Müller, we delivered it to the site where they could process it then just on time for the three Italian companies that are contracting the, the bridge. I think we have some problem with the connection of, yes, of, yes. Uh, of John. Yes, Please, Enrico, continue yourself. Yes, yes, now it's working. So just to just to connect to what uh, uh, our friend John has just said is that uh, one, one of our goals uh, in the sustainability has been exactly uh, to, to find a more green uh, option uh, and in this case, uh, this green option has been the transport by train. And, you know, because with, with, with this, with this uh, kind of transport, we have been able to, to take away from roads about 62, almost 63,000 trucks every year. So this has been really a great result. So, uh, considering considering this important request, okay, requirement, I would say that we had to deal with. So the the just in time delivery uh, to 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 be able to face this, uh, we have we have a, always a good availability of material in stock uh, because our our production and our stocks turn very quickly so we can always give to our customers uh, available quantities sizes and diameters and quickly okay just in time one of the second issues that have been solved regarding the the rust free material or the so-called blue material is that we have decided to deliver all quantities in the in covered wagons in order to to keep all the materials safe from any possible atmospherical agent and this has been very successful okay yeah great so uh, one last question for you enrico and just uh, just, just a quick thing what makes uh, pitini the right business partner for for our customer outside there what we what we must say about about uh, the pitini group is that all all the group is based on people uh, we have a very big structure that counts over 100 people that work on daily business on regular basis uh, and different markets to give a service and to make the customer care we have local people and a very well structured sales network uh, that give us more experience and knowledge of the market day by day and more moreover we have a commitment that is to be always at the customer's side. So um, I would invite uh, all the people, all the participants to keep on choosing Pitini as a business partner and they will find always the right knowledge, the quality and the service for their business. Great very much Enrico uh, about this uh, 
this interesting uh, conversation. I hope John will reach us again. Uh, I, don't, I remind to all the participants that I see numerous today, if they have any question to about this project, just to ask in the chat here. I will. Uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm, I was very, very interested about this thing of environment because uh, usually um, still is not related or still making is not related to environment. And uh, a question from my side uh, to you, Enrico, and um, what uh, what do you think in the future? You see more and more requests of uh, like uh, green steel or environmental friendly uh, steel making? Uh, yes, Fabio. Thanks. Thanks for your question. Uh, for sure, this is this is the direction that has been taken, uh, not only only by Pitini Group, but this is this is a requirement that starts to come more and more from all the different markets. It started from the north, but is coming is 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 getting spread also also to other countries. So, for sure. For sure, to answer to your question, the, the, the answer is yes. And, and this is also the reason why uh, our group is, is making a continuous research investments and, and, and has a, a, a plan for the future to improve all our numbers, all our results, and to take a lot of attention to the environment. I, I see that the topic is um, interesting because I just received another question from Mika from the chat uh, asking more or less the same thing. Uh, I will address the same question to John if he's uh, now connecting better. What do you think about John sustainability in the building sector nowadays? Well, this is of course up here in the north very, very important. So everywhere here we have talking about EPD. It has actually come nowadays the mandatory thing you need to have to be even invited to discuss, let's say, projects and deliver steel to project. And of course, we have the big, big steel producer up here in the north, which is called SSAB, and they are investing heavily in what you would call hydrogen produced steel. They're, of course, using an all other method than we do doing in Italy at the moment. They're using blast furnace, which is really a big, big polluter. We in Italy are using, of course, scrap, which is much, much more environmental friendly. But uh, you can see this everywhere. So it, it's a little bit bizarre that actually you talk about Norway, which are growing with oil and they are going away from oil. So <laughs> this is they are the richest country in the world. There was an article today on the news that uh, their petroleum fund, which is the biggest investment fund on a global level, only invest mainly in environmental friendly uh, industries. So they're really heavily moving away from oil. So yes, environment is everywhere. This is what you can say. OK, so it's, it's not only a trend, but a future. Yeah. And uh, we, we have another question here from the the, the chat. Uh, um, they asked me uh, due to this uh, its particular packaging in the quality of jumble koi. Ah, OK. Uh, That's for you, Enrico. Uh, yes. Which they're asking about the, the, the differences of quality between uh, jumbo coil and rebar. If jumbo coil, due to its particular shipping or packaging, is uh, as lower quality respect to rebars. No. Well, uh, so if if I have understood well uh, the question. Um, jumbo coils and rebars uh, are okay are not the same product but but a very similar product mm, honestly uh, i would say that there is not really a quality difference but but the fact is that the world and and the the um, cons construction the construction sector is moving more and more to a more <laughs> sorry i repeat uh, <laughs> Uh, automized uh, production. Okay, we have to consider that uh, many countries have high cost of labor, and so um, they use they use the technology uh, and prefer to use the coils because there is a machine that can produce uh, the the needed material. 
Okay, so mm, the, the only difference that I would say between the rebars and the coils is mainly related to, to this and to, to the things that we have said before. For example, the waste uh, that, that uh, the end user can have during the process. Yeah, there are less with coils, right? Yeah. Um, uh, we, we miss a little bit, uh, John, before in the presentation and was telling us, uh, uh, but I will ask him uh, about the last miles because we say that for this project they need small quantities delivered on times of rust free coils. So with rust freeze, we had cover wagons and we um, send all of that uh, um, by by trail. And but what did you arrange to be uh, just in time deliveries for the so customer? What we did, what we did together with Lemmich Müller and an external partner is that we decided to store the material 100 kilometers away from where the bridge is built. And of course, you know, the project goes on to their own schedule. And as we had this hub there, we could then deliver on call off basis in covered trucks. Unfortunately, we had to deliver the final leg by trucks, not by train, because there is no train connection yet there at the construction site. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and this, this, let's say, enabled then the just-in-time plus on top, as the coils really needed to be rust-free. They couldn't have any rust on them, because this was a requirement due to the equipment at the site. They also were blue when they arrived, and this was, of course, how we did it, with the local hub in Denmark. Yeah, very, very interesting because it is a kind of a customized service uh, for a particular core customer, a particular project. So it's very, very interesting. It's not selling a standard, but working for a service for the customer, not only selling a product. So great. I don't see actually any any other question. So I will thank you both for your uh, for your time today and for this interesting project. Uh, so uh, thank you, John. Thank you um, also, of course, Enrico. Thank and um, I will remind to all the participants to go to steelhead.it to see the next webinars, what's going on, and uh, to be ahead on the steel sector. So thank you again and see you next time. Bye.